Last year, I quit my job to learn the world's most specific skill, Minecraft data packing. To prove I haven't wasted my time, I've spent the last two months trying to complete an insane task. Make a bigger Minecraft update than Mojang. Not just any update, but the update that added data packs. 1.13 Update Aquatic. I'm gonna beat the update that added data packs with a data pack. So here's the plan. Number one, I'm only counting the ocean content from Update Aquatic. I want to focus purely on making the oceans fun and worthwhile to explore. And number two, to get a firm number of things I need to add, instead of counting features, I'm going to tally up every single ocean thing 1.13 added. Like, for instance, I'm not going to count tropical fish as one, I'm going to count it as... Oh, fuck. Okay, well, if we're going to add over 3,500 things to the game, we better get started. If we're going to make the oceans more explorable, then we've got to make the oceans less empty. So let's start by adding more mobs. The problem is data packs don't really have a way to do this, so we're going to have to use some smoke and mirrors. There's this plugin for a program called Blockbench that takes advantage of one of Minecraft's newer features called Display Entities. It allows you to make animated custom models, but that's all they are. There's no hitboxes, there's no AI, no health. It's just a purely visual husk. So to bring it to life, we're basically gonna duct tape it to another mob by teleporting the model to it 20 times a second. Give the mob it's duct tape to invisibility, add some commands to steal the mob's rotation data and control when the model's animations play, and boom. It's alive. So I made a few mobs like this to start out. I added anglerfish, which lurk on the ocean floor waiting to attack you. They have poor vision though, so they won't see you unless you get relatively close. And then I also added clamps, which you right click on to open and they have a 50% chance of giving you a pearl when you do. And next up I added jellyfish, which firstly they glow with shaders enabled, which just looks awesome when swimming by or even in a boat floating above them. But I also added something pretty fun with them. If you right click on them with an empty glass bottle, it'll give you a new decorative light source block called a jelly jar. These are so fun, it's just a floating jellyfish in a jar, but it adds so much nice little ocean ambiance. And okay, we're off to a good start. That's, uh, let's see, anglerfish, jellyfish, that's five new things. Eh, that's a good start. We've only got 3,644 left to go. Oh god, let's keep going. Okay, uh, we need some hallmark features to really embody this pack. I think first and foremost, we've just really got to make exploring the oceans easier. I mean, who's really going to spend the time fishing for enough puffer fish to explore an entire ocean, right? So I added a submarine. Completely unrelated to recent events, I swear. I was significantly displeased to discover my pack was inevitably going to get wrapped up into a meme. And no, I didn't make the control panel into a PlayStation controller. That's a stupid idea even in Minecraft. You'll find the submarines broken down on the ocean floor. Right click on them with one iron block, five redstone dust, and one glass block to repair it. Right click to get inside and you'll be able to explore to your heart's content in a tiny yellow submarine. You can move horizontally like any other mountain in the game, but you ascend and descend by looking all the way up or all the way down. And honestly, even knowing the features I haven't explained yet, that it's probably one of my favorite features of the pack. It's just so fun. And so, okay, we're now a week and a half into development, and the submarine took about three days, so we're at now six, six features. Okay, maybe we should focus on smaller features, good god. So anyways, uh, on to a totally small feature, microbiomes. I added two, there's minefields and coral forests. These serve two purposes. The first is to add more variety in the oceans to explore, and the second is to provide a place for the submarine and the clams to spawn. At first, I wasn't really sure how I was going to make these, but then I gave it some thought and I realized I could just use structure generation like how I've tended to do my structure overhauls in the past. Basically, I created a bunch of tiles to paint over the ocean floor at random, which all spawn off of each other from a central point. The coral forest is where you'll find the majority of clams in this pack. It's similar to a normal coral reef, but it's significantly taller and you'll find ores generating in some of the coral to enhance a purely underwater playthrough. Anyways, on to the other microbiome, the minefields. You'll also find some decent loot here or there hiding on the ocean floor here, but the main prize is the broken submarine in the center of them. Once you repair it, your first obstacle to really claim ownership of the sub is to navigate it out of the minefield. And let me tell you, the mines were a challenge here. I had two major problems come up. The first was preventing the mines from spawning too high up, causing this disaster zone. I couldn't have a set length for the chains on the mines since the ocean floor's height varied. I'd either have the mines spawning way too high or way too low. So to fix this, I added simple procedural generation to them. 
A marker entity is spawned at the base of the chain, and it has a 30% chance to stop growing upwards every three blocks. However, if four blocks above it is not water though, it forces it to stop then. So now the mines can spawn at random elevations without ever rising above the water regardless of where the ocean floor is. The second problem was that I wanted the mines to be able to be set off by arrows so you weren't forced to get near them to get rid of them. Again, like the mobs though, they're made of display entities, so it has no hitbox, which means I have no way to detect if an arrow actually hits it. I could detect if the arrow just gets really close to it and do it that way, but with dozens of mines around, that'll cause a lot of lag. So the solution I came up with was to hide an invisible slime inside them, and when it takes damage, it'll trigger the detonation. Okay, quick check-in. So we've got the coral forest, we've got the minefields. Uh, we'll count the mines separately since they're different from the minefield itself. That puts us up to nine. Oh god, okay, let's let's just keep going. Uh, you'd think I'd be over here planning a bunch of small things to catch up, but I'm gonna spoil it now. Most of what I'm gonna add from here is a lot of big things. So the next thing the oceans are missing that I want to work on is... Ding, ding, ding! You got it. Progression. The only thing that you actively work to get in the ocean are tritons. I mean, sure, yeah, sponge as well, but like, we all agree that sponge being locked behind the ocean monument's kind of stupid, right? So let's address all of this at once by giving a use for pearls. Ladies and gents, now three and a half weeks into development, I present to you the lost city of Atlantis and complete with the merfolk, a new villager type. These sunken cities are generally quite large, sometimes partially sunken into the ocean floor from centuries of battling the ocean currents. You can find some chests here with some decent loot or trade with the merfolk, and trading with them is a bit of a hybrid between villagers and piglins. There's three tiers of currency, pearls, the bulbs dropped by the anglerfish, and one more I'll explain later. Right click on them with the currency and it will spit out a random item from a loot table, increasing in value with each currency type. And also a big thank you to my Discord mod, Carex for making the model for these guys. And an even bigger thank you to my patrons. This month, your support paid for me to gargle monster energy into my microphone while making villager sounds. And finally, what would an ocean update be without a huge ocean monstrosity lurking in the depths? Taking almost two weeks of development on its own, now introducing the Kraken. This new boss lies waiting in its nest, waiting for you to get too close. You'll have a very hard time surviving this thing if you're underwater, because it's nearly as fast as you. If you're in a boat above it, however, you'll get the full Pirates of the Caribbean experience as its tentacles wail on you and shoot out lines of splash attacks, which will break your boat. It's completely invulnerable from all attacks except the weak points at the base of its tentacles. Take out all eight of its tentacles to defeat it, at which point you're rewarded by the loot stashed in its nest, as well as its drop, the Eldritch Core. When you hold the Eldritch Core in your offhand, you'll receive a significant combat boost with a resistance effect and plus two to your attacks. But the power it drains from you to do so means your hunger will decrease rapidly. However, instead, you could trade the core with the merfolk to get the Helm of the Sea. When worn, this helmet gives you permanent conduit power in Depth Strider 3, which just might make it possible to take on the Kraken underwater when combined with Depth Strider boots and a trident. However, it's worth keeping in mind that this helmet doesn't just work in the oceans, so you'll be able to explore underwater caves with ease. Ooh, and okay, we are now a month and a week into development, and we've added so many new things. Let's see, that last batch of features brings us up to... Oh, for f**k's sake, we're only at 16? Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a lot, but like, it's a far cry from the 3,649 we're aiming for. Uh, how in the world am I gonna contend with procedurally generated fish? Oh. Oh! You know, if Mojang can do it, why can't I? I mean, if you can't beat him, join him, right? Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll make a bigger, better procedurally generated mob and blow 3,500 out of the water. Okay, and four days of work later, meet the seahorse a brand new underwater mount. It's got five parts that randomly choose a variation from a pool of 10 each. So 10 to the power of five is, uh, yeah, that's a whopping 100,000 variations. When riding them, they control just like a submarine, but they give strength instead of water breathing. Once you get the Helm of the Sea, these things are basically better submarines. And with that many variants, the one you find will be truly unique in its own. And look, if you think these things are a bit of a cop-out, I'll have you know that getting these things working smoothly was no small task. 92 different texture files, crazy complicated bugs, optimization reworks, these things were a nightmare! 
but I think they beat the tropical fish in every possible way. And with that, that brings the pack up to a total of 100,016 new things. And I think the coolest part is we did it with zero mods, just using the data and resource pack features that Mojang has provided themselves. If you want to get your hands on this pack, it's up for early access on my Patreon, link in the description. Once it's out of early access, it'll be available for free, which you can also find in the description once that happens. And actually, this project is just one of a list of projects where I've quote unquote fixed Minecraft using data packs. So far, I've done dungeons, archaeology, and the deep dark. Check it out, there's a playlist on screen right now. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!